Alright, Tron and Liberty, all classes. This is video number two. So try to find another one on my channel. And this video is about classes, skills, videos about classes. Everything that you need to know to understand which class to play in Tron and Liberty when it will be released, at least in Korea, on the 7th of December. And understand pros and cons for each weapon, which is class, for PvE and PvP. Let's go. My name is PLK. Please subscribe to the channel because you see this is many, many different topics and much in deep information about the game, right? Go. In this video, we will talk about three last classes, which is Mage, Tom and Wand, and Sword and Shield. And we will starting with my boy, Mage. Why it's my boy? Because, you know, Lineage franchise, and it's Lineage 3, as we know in, from previous videos, in all Lineage series, Mages were the best grinders, the best AoE grinders, and for this game, grind is super, super critical, right? So if the class can grind, you can progress fast. If you can progress fast, you can kill people. And you know, it's just it's just how it goes in this type of the games. It looks like it's more easier to play as the mage, but the mage is cloth wearer, so it will be killed faster by daggers and others. But 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 if you'll spend enough time and resources to this class, mages will just destroy. Anyway, mages. Mages have passive skills, which is man regeneration, chance to fire more projectiles during the attack which is additional damage. More damage during the damage over time effects. Increase maximum mana, restore mana when you hit the target, and every time you silence, you will increase your silence resistance for 45 seconds. Cool? Cool. And looks, look at that, boys. As a mage, we have active skills. First one, chain lightning. You're shooting lightning balls, dealing lightning attribute damage equal 270% plus 18. And also, if the target is wet, and it's raining or foggy or somebody cuts the spell with the water i don't know if they exist or not but you will do the aoe damage and you can see that on the video right and also you inflict the damage over time effect burning and you can stack it a lightning barrier defend against an attack using magic so it's consume additional stamina but after successful defending from the skill or attack you can attack back dealing damage about 230 percent plus 17. It's kind of trend. We have the same type of their skills with the daggers. And I think it was with crossbows and maybe with a great sword. It's kind of for all the classes. Next one is serial flame bombs. Shooting a ball of fire at the target dealing damage equal to 80% plus 6. And inflicts stack of the burning damage with 50% of chance. And it looks like it's not only one bomb. So you will do multiple fire damage inflicting burning and you can do the lightning which also will inflict the burning you get it right you collect all the mobs in the territory and then just LE them infernal wave calls upon the flames that break through the ground dealing damage equal to 140 percent base damage plus 18 to the target and its surroundings and of course you inflict burning and of course you can stack it so just imagine you can stack burning effects from different skills and I don't know, is it like limit to the stacks? But in the end, the target will die fast. Inner Composure. For 6-7, focus on mind inwards to increase mana regeneration by 300% or twice when in wet state. So this class like to be wet. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, next one. High Concentration. Intensely focus the mind to increase cooldown speed by 35% and global cooldown speed by 30% for 12 seconds. I mean, that's cool. Like, you use all these skills, then you click this, cooldown only 1 minute 30 seconds, and you can reuse other big spells. Yeah, it's mostly for the big spells, but it will reduce cooldown for all the skills. And Judgment Lightning. Concentrates magic to summon powerful lightning that deal damage equal to 690% of base damage plus 95. And I want to remind you one more time, the normal weapon damage is like 20-30, right? So it's like plus 95 stable and 690% of base damage. And also, if the target is wet, everybody in a radius 5 meters will be damaged for 460%. I mean, up to 5 targets. Yo, it also it's inflict burning and also it inflicts stacks which will grant a 5% chance for additional use within 10 seconds. I don't know how, but for this class, you have to understand how to make people wet or target sweat, because with wet, I mean, yeah, you need to, you need to basically to level up on the beach, on the coast or something, because wet targets are much, much faster to die from the mage. 
And what you can see from the overall class, as always, mage is super damage dealer, and it's super thin. So all daggers, all longbow users will kill you fast, if they will have a chance, if they will come to you. And I don't see that mage have any slow skills, but in the videos, we have this ice barrier or something skill to be right now, right? Yes, this is, so you can slow targets with ice or something. We don't have this skill in this table. And I, one what I want to remind you, this table is outdated from six months previous beta, but still we need to understand what this class will be. And we can, right? So you can slow target a little bit. And also you have this big one. It's the last skill that we discussed, right? And this one. Teleportation plus you stop or freeze target. But anyway, it will be damage dealer class. It will be super good in PvP, in group PvP. When the tank will be in the front and daggers will, you know, do their stuff and you just will kill targets from the distance. It's good for grind. Most likely it will destroy everybody if you will, as I said, spend enough time and resources to this class. I really want to try it because my nostalgia is telling me I was a dark mage, which is the spell howler. I think it was the name of the mage class in line H2. And I like mages. So yeah, mage. Next one, we have a tank. And tank have the following passives. Closer to the target, more evasion to bows and magic you will have. Mana restoration when you evade hits and skills. Every percentage of the shield block chance increase overall protection. Every basic attack is provoking enemies in the range and make more damage stably. On the successful blocks, you will stack increasing resistance to CC and reduce all cooldown on stuns or any collisions cause caused by you, right? So it looks like you need to level up and increase as much as possible shield block chats because you will get more protection, you will get more increasing resistance to CC yeah, that's basically it. You like armored tank that's killing by the stun and have crazy amount of different resistance. Let's see what about the active skills. So for the active skills we have first one, strike shield. This is a shield to quick bash a target and deal damage. Plus for every percent of the shield block chance, heavy attack chance is increased by 70. So basically you need to increase shield block chance, right? Shield survival technique. Defend against an attack using a shield, consumes additional stamina, like all other classes. And upon defending against a fury attack, restores 170 health. What is fury attack? I don't know, but most likely is that just a fast attack, right? Counter barrier. Focus mind on the shield, increasing shield block chance by 12%, all right, and then protection and everything else. Upon successful blocking or evading a melee attack, inflicts a counter-attack that deals damage equal to 250% of damage reduction. What does it mean? I think it's a wrong translation. Most likely it's just damage. Like you're counter-attacking with this damage. Chain hook. Yeah, I saw that. And it's fury attack. One more time, I don't know what is fury attack, but throw the chain hook to a target with 50% chance of inflicting collision. Pull. Okay, when you use it on boss monsters, you will move to the location. Against the monster, the chance of applying this effect increased by 15%. It's basically, you are the pooch from Dota 2, right? You're hooking the target, you pull it to yourself, and then you're stunning, and all the mages and longbow users just kill this guy, right? And Rage has a 45 chance to inflict provoke to nearby targets for 6 seconds. Okay, so this is basically the provocation spell. Fierce Clash, also Fury Attack. With a shield, powerfully shove to target in front, dealing damage equal to some percentage, like 240, and with 62% chance inflicted collision push. And the push distance is affected by collision chance and collision resistance. Other targets that collide with the push target receive the same effect. If the push target collides into the wall, the target is stunned for one second. That's super cool. Like when you're fighting during the castle siege or so, you just push everybody to the walls and they stand for some amount of time and mages doing the AOE, right? Still, I didn't see any stun spells. Imbrangible, a near perfect defensive skill that increases damage reduction by 60 for 9 seconds. It's basically the tank skill. I don't see any skills here about the stuns, but I definitely saw stuns in the video. Let us check one more time. Okay, so you teleport. Oh yeah, this is the chain, but you're teleporting to the monster, right? Then you do some skills, you do the defense, you did the EOE actually, some kind of EOE skill, right? 
and I saw the shield bar, but I didn't see the any type of the stance. Yeah, this was the push, right? AOE attack. He throws his sword. Yeah, this is the pull. Yeah, I don't see any stuns, but I saw stuns when I uh, watched Stopperu video. This guy stunned targets with a shield and sword and then killed with a great sword. So we will definitely have a stun on this class. But overall, what do we have as attack? It's typical tank, which is super cool. You can pull targets to yourself, not to rush to them, but pull to yourself, right? You can defense yourself and you need to maximize your percentage of the shield block. It will definitely help. And I remember from Lineage 2M, the tanks, they could be, they could progress for so high defense and everything that that will be the raid bosses. Just imagine, on successful block, you stack increasing resistance to CC. Basically, after 10 stacks, you will be immune for any CC. You have a protection, you have a weight from magic when you're close to the target. So you want to push, you want to pull them to you or rush to them, right? So you will have evasion from both and magic, you will have protection and everything. And also from every attack, you provoke the target and also every attack, just a, just a standard attack, will do more damage, like plus 20 or so more damage. So tanks will be pretty harsh. I mean, tanks will be pretty good in this game. The only issue is the grind. Always, always in Lineage 2 and Lineage 2M, tanks to, to grind as a tank, oh, it was the guild event because it's super, super, super tough. So be smart. If you want to be the tank, try to understand that you'll spend more time than other classes like Mage, but also it could be super unique and super, super cool. Yeah, let's go forward. We have the next one. We have our Tom and Wand user, which is healer, buffer. And I can say to you guys that I checked the passives of this guy and the passives of this guy is super huge. I think this will be the player killer for like just one, two, three months. I will explain. Okay, Wand and Tom, right? Super simple class. Not super big damage, as I can see, but what we have as a passive skills. After damage over time by you, target died, you will increase your damage for 9 seconds. More heals during the day and more damage over time skills during the night. You heal percent of your damage to yourself or to the friendly target of every your damage over time skills, right? Increase damage over time spells time. And when you hit the enemy with the damage over time cooldown, restore faster. And more mana, more heal. So when you will have the 100% of mana, your heals will be super huge. And it looks like this class is more about you need to do more damage to heal yourself. You need to do more damage to heal your, you know, party members. And also you can heal them directly. And also you can heal targets with dots. It's basically like Warlock, Infliction Warlock. It was Infliction as I remember, right? In World of Warcraft, Infliction Warlock with all these dots and also as a healer and also you heal targets when you do the damage. I mean, at the beginning, this class will be just undestroyable in PvP. That's super cool. But let's check active skills. All right. First skill is Touch of Despair. Applies Curse on a target dealing damage over time. Dot. 20% of base damage plus 2 per second for 9 seconds and can be stacked upon 2 times. Okay, it's kind of 4... 100% damage if you will stack it two times. Cool. Uses magic defense, consume additional stamina. Yeah, that's the same for all, as a, for all other classes. But it will not do damage back. It will activate the curse effect for some small period of time for every target around you, which is cool. Quick recovery. Restore a friendly target health by 200% of base damage plus 38. And you know what? We didn't discuss all the rare, epic and legendary versions of the skills, which Sometimes add small pieces, but sometimes these small pieces could be super, super huge, right? Like additional 70% of base damage recovery. But anyway, 200% of your damage plus 38. It's just direct heal. It still have cooldown of 9 seconds. So the game, the developers thinking that you will not heal directly the one target all the time. You will do the damage by your passive. You will heal this target and also you will heal this target when you really need that, right? And the legendary skill, recover more health on 4% of target's maximum health. That's super huge. And you should remember that when you will just, you know, level up, you will heal yourself from the monsters. 
when you will do the dot attacks on them. Curse Explosion. Deal damage equal to 410% plus 49 to the target. For any enemies within 5 meters of the target that you have inflicted with the curse damage over time, it will forcibly remove all curse burning poison effects on them, dealing 100% damage of the remaining damage. You will clean all the curses at one time, but all it will be just the explosion of the curse. Super cool. Nightmare Bulk. What is that? Has 45% chance to decrease movement speed. Okay, slow and attack speed. Cool. That's a super huge debuff. By 30%. And then the target is inflicted by sleep for 6 to 9 seconds. So you will do all the slowness and the other stuff and then the target will sleep. That is super huge. You just drop this, do all the dots, right? And just wait while target will be dead. I remember in Lineage 2 the sleep in the first Chronicles. It was just, you know cheat code to, to kill. This guy will not do the super huge damage, but it will kill everybody. It will be the most slow grind, but still it will be grind on a higher location because this guy is self-sufficient. He can heal himself, right? And everything. Okay. Clay Rescue. A recovery magic devised by the Carmen Wizard. Clay. For healing multiple targets, heal all party members within the range of 330% of base damage plus 413 health. If it's correct, it's a huge one. Cool down 27 seconds. It's like the savior for the party, right? You can debuff, you can heal, you can dot, right? And time for punishment. Has 60% chance to using curse magic to cover the target with chaos armor for 9 seconds, decreasing their skill damage resistance by 190. So all the skills that will go to the target will be much, much, much worse for the target. So yeah, you debuff the target with all you have, you dot the target with all you have, you heal yourself and target just die. If you want to be harsh with the magic, this is the class for you. So this could be a super interesting class. I'm, I'm, I really, I don't know what class I should I choose. I really like the mage, but we have two weapons. So maybe Mage and uh, Tom and Wand will be super cool for the uh, for the grinding, right? And uh, okay, let's see, let's see. What do you think about the classes, guys? What class you prefer to choose? Please comment below. Of course, subscribe. Of course, like the video, right? Because I mean, if you're still with me, thank you for that. And I was happy to see you guys. I preparing so many different cool material about this game in the nearest days. So keep in touch. See you. Bye.